Okay, awesome. I don't feel ready. Are you ready? Let's just chat, dude. We're having a fat chat now. Yeah. So, yeah, let's hit it. How's it, everybody? Welcome to Crisp. My name is Sekwatela, and I'm joined by none other than Kumo Lef. Kumo, it's nice to have you. It's your boy, Kumo Lef. What's up, man? Ah, it's fresh, bro. You're Kumo left, but you're sitting on the right. So, <laughs> how are you feeling, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm in a really good place. Yourself? Oh, yes. I'm very good. Very good. And I'm sure you're in a good place because we, we heard the song that you're performing. Uh, it's called Do, Do you. you. Do yeah. You. Yes. Tell us more about that. So, Do You is a song that just came up um, a couple of weeks ago. It happened in like 10, 20 minutes. Ah. So, I was chilling with uh, my producer, Caesar. He's amazing. And we were just chilling there. And he came up with a beat. I just started randomly singing melodies to it. Mm. And then I was thinking about like, uh, you know how I say I'm in a good place right now, but mm. like uh, how I'm just doing me, you know, as a person. Mm. And how at the same time, there was a kind of relationship that wanted to bloom, but this person wanted me to be there more than I could. So I was like, you know what? Rather don't focus on me right now, just do you. you know? Oof. And then the elements of the song just happen to come together like that. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Some sage advice from, from the man Kumo <laughs> left on my right, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that sounds pretty exciting. And you said that it took like 20 minutes to throw this all together. Yeah. We've seen a lot of your freestyles. Um, uh, would you consider yourself a freestyle-er, a freestyle rapper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, that's all I am right now. Wow. Uh, because I haven't written a song in five years. You so, haven't written a song in yeah, five at years. Yeah, I've done in the last five years. I haven't written. Sheesh. So I've just gone off the fly with it. So it's not like every song was one take, but everything was done without having to use pen or paper for me to type it or anything. Damn. Yeah. I feel like I want to test this. Can I give you a beat right now? Can I give <laughs> you a beat? Of course you'd want to uh, test Yeah, this. of course, bro, because you're out here flexing, so we must, must give you something to cool, flex let's with. let's do it. Okay, are we, are we? Let's see. Um, <clears throat> mm. Is that the beat? Okay. Uh, yeah. I saw the money coming like a prophet. Dead presidents, pockets looking like they coffins. Yeah, ready to start. Don't know who the hell gonna stop it. Hellfire, we're never gonna stop this. And will or oh, my way. Don't know if my will is the way, but I will have a way. Straight. And I'ma spit it with no delay. Don't matter what I'm sitting on, left or the right today. I got the rights to play. The right, no charades, got the lights everywhere. But anyway, if it happens that I drop it, it's probably gonna be anvils because I'm a heavyweight. <laughs> hey! <laughs> okay, you're the real deal. Yeah, yeah, He's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, you should yeah. definitely check him out. Okay, but yeah, that's that's pretty exciting, man. Yeah. Like, yo, you must have been honing this freestyle thing for a while. You must have been like listening to rap like for a long time. So tell yeah. us about like the come up. Tell us about like what got you inspired to actually get into music, you know? Uh, honestly, I wasn't inspired to get into music. Uh, I've been in music my whole life. I don't remember when I actually started, you know, but I, I do know when I started to pursue it, mm -hmm. you know, when I decided that, okay, I want to make something out of it. And it was a long time ago and um, I just, I didn't, you know, for the most part. I did everything else but pursue this. And then after um, a couple of life lessons, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to be anybody else but this anyway. So oh. let me just pursue my dream, man. So since then, I've, I've worked with quite a lot of people, you oh. know, behind the scenes, got to learn the game quite a lot from behind the scenes. So my come up almost feels complete, you know, even though I'll be considered as an upcoming artist because like this is the first time that people are going to, you know, know about me and see me. But... I've already, you know, done quite a lot of the back work, yeah. Look, look, it's, it's not the first time that people are going to see you. Maybe it's the first time they're going to see you no, on your first. own. Yeah, 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 it's not Because I've, I've seen you in, like, a lot of features. Um, the feature that you did with RZA, RZA, um, what is the three-letter one on YouTube. Okay. Fantastic. Right. Um, we were literally banging it um, during research because we really enjoyed the vibe, the flow. Yeah, yeah. So with all these features, I'm sure you've, like, gained experience, as you're saying. So, like, tell us like about your favorite feature, the favorite one that you featured with, because you featured with like so many people. Actually, yeah. one of the favorites um, that, uh, that I can mention now is a song with P.O. 
uh, and Youngster CBT. Because mm. how that came about was Caesar and I, my producer, mm. we had already created the song. So the song had been sitting for some time. And then he played it for P. Dot. And P. Dot was like, yo, this is lit. And then he just immediately jumped on it. And then after jumping on it, Caesar sends me the track. He says, what do you think? I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then I'm like, okay, he can put it out if he wants to. He can have it as his own song. Uh, I'm cool because I don't have an inten any intentions of using that song right now. Mm. And then they send me the song again, then it has Youngster CPT on it. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then next thing I hear about it, it's charting on 5 FM. Like, oh, okay, cool. cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> the way that just came about for me was like, uh, it was pretty interesting. Damn. So you mentioned your producer, Caesar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've noticed that you guys look like your homies, like yeah. saw pictures of you guys on Facebook, you know, those poses in the bathroom, pretty yeah. dope. Um, tell us more about um, not just Caesar, but um, Candy Store as like a producing group. Like, yeah, tell yeah. us more about the projects and the, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So Caesar and I have worked very closely for a couple of years now. I'm not even sure how many. But um, so how we met is that I used to go to a mutual friend's place and he would play me beats and I'd always choose a certain beat and I'd mm. jump on it. And then by the third beat when I did that, I was like, who's this guy's beats that you keep <laughs> giving me, right? And then he introduced me to Caesar and I played him the song. I was like, hey, bro. What do you think? He's like, yo, this song is fire, right? And then he wanted to charge me for it. And I told him, I don't buy beats. <laughs> and then he's like, what? You don't buy beats? Well, then screw you. And then we just, that's how we met, right? Oh. <laughs> and then like not long after that, I was working with another guy who needed like a, a hands-on producer all the time. And then he was the first person I could think of, you know, ah. because he was using his actual, you know, computer typing keyboard to make beats. And they were sounding crazy, you know what I mean? And then, yeah, he got there and then, he was paid quite a lot for it. And then he realized why not to charge me for beats. Ah, because <laughs> you're the connection. You're the yeah, plug, bro. Yeah, I don't buy beats. I just, I really do believe that, you know, when I'm going to sit down with a producer, I'm bringing in an, in an equal input. He's bringing in an equal input. And then, you know, from that, we'll both eat. But if I don't know you and I really did want your beat, I probably might have to buy it, but I probably still won't. Ah, oh, I check. I might think about it. I check. Up. But yeah, you know, man, just, just keep the, the, yeah. the flow. Um, mutually beneficial relationships. Yeah, yeah. And, and good old networking. Yeah. Um, the Dunning-Kruger effect that you did with Candy Store, you're yeah. pretty cool on SoundCloud. I yeah. saw you even um, retweeted if that's what you do on SoundCloud. That's, yeah. um, I'm assuming that you're involved there somehow. Yeah. Tell so us about Dunning that Kruger process. So the Dunning-Kruger effect was um, the the first actual EP that Caesar and I cooked together and decided to put out, because he and I have like a catalog of songs that we've never released. So they're basically, you know, getting lost in the hard drive with ah. every day. But um, uh, yeah, so that was a pretty, pretty cool uh, project we put together that was based on the Dunning-Kruger effect, which was a study that was conducted to, you know, basically see that there are certain people that don't know how bad they are at certain things and that's mm -hmm. what makes them actually succeed because they won't, you know, have any limitations to them actually trying stuff. You know Damn. those guys that you know, like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, the but he's wooden doing The wooden mic it. people from exactly. Idols that just the keep believing. Right. Yeah, like, I see there's a name for that. That guy doesn't have the same limitations as what most talented people would have, oh. you know, and they go out for it. And then we were like in a, at a crossroad with ourselves because we are like, why don't we putting the stuff out? You know, and then that's the same time we came across that study because we were overthinking it. Ah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, and and I'm, I'm glad to like, well, not glad. It's interesting to hear the process that you had with Caesar, you know, someone that you're very like familiar with. Um, so tell us, with your new EP coming out, was that like a solo project or it is a solo project, but like tell us about the experience of doing things solo yeah. versus doing things like so this one was particularly producer. unique, actually, because ah. um, I haven't actually been in studio with Caesar for a long time. So I keep talking about him alone because uh, he's been the one person that I've worked with for so long. Mm -hmm. That's why our sessions are so quick, by the ah. way. And so he and I, we linked up for a long time and he started working on a beat. Then we did Do You. And then about an hour after that, he started working on another beat. And then 20 minutes after that, we had uh, Thanks For Waiting, which is another song that's going to be on the EP. Oof, all these <laughs> tasters. So, so these are two songs that are going to be on the EP that were both done technically in an hour, <laughs> you know, because the energy was just like, it was correct, you know what I mean? Everything was just so, so beautiful about it. And then we managed to do those two tracks and then we were like, okay, we're not making anything else that we're not going to put out. So let's mm -hmm. just make this EP, the rest of the songs on this thing and just take it out. 
That's pretty so, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. And and as I said earlier, very easy listenings. Um, our research team were, were referring to you as like a hook guy. Would you mm. call yourself a hook guy because of how like easy your flow is to listen to? Yeah. You know, how, how nice it could be like as a hook? Would you th consider yourself that? You know, uh, <laughs> I feel a little bit like what I think David Blaine feels like before oh. he's going to perform a magic trick because of what I know we have in the catalog, you know? Oof. So, um, yeah, sure, you could say I'm the hook guy right now. Ah. You know, um, the stuff that I'm putting out right now is intentionally, you know, meant to have the effect that it does. But I rap too, so, you know, uh, um, I, I sing, I, I have a lot of other friends who do the same things, and I have some of them on, um, on the catalog of music that we have. And there are so many different dimensions to the music that we've created. Uh, the hook guy will literally probably be how I'm remembered. Oh, for, for now, for now, for now. Hook, line, and sync. <laughs> Got <me>. Trust <laughs> Okay, yeah, but you sound like you're very sure about where you want, what your sound wants to be, who you're sending it to. You sound very deliberate about where you're going. So tell us about what you want people to feel when they listen to your music. Who do you want it to be for? What situations, you know, would be ideal for a Kumo left track, you know, just to be in yeah. the background, you know? I mean, there's, there's really so many layers to, to how I can answer that because, I mean, I'm an African in Africa, but I believe I was, I was born on the earth, you know? Uh, I belong in that space, you know what I mean? Um, like, I consider myself someone without any limits. They say, think out the box. I say, what box? You know what I mean? And for me, like, I'm just, I'm literally in a place where I want to expose myself more to the world than just here at home. You know, mm. even though there is local flavors in my music that I think would work here and abroad. Mm. You know what I mean? I really just, I... I want to give myself to the world, you know, because that's, that's just who I am, man. Oh. I, I don't believe in just doing stuff to represent a certain place and just staying there. Oh. I can represent it from Mars if I had to, you know what I mean? But I, I, just, I just literally want to put my music out there to the world and see how much I can conquer. Like when I'm thinking about the concert I want to do, I want to do Tomorrowland, man. Damn. You know what I mean? I, I want to do stuff Taking like that. Questions. <laughs> hey, that's, that was literally going to be the next question. Where's, <laughs> where do you see like Kumo Left yeah. performing the bigger stage, you know? This is the dream. Yeah, you know, Tomorrowland. Like, Tomorrowland, that's Tomorrowland, the one. If Tomorrowland won't be the biggest, then I want to be part of um, an event that will be created in the future that kind of feels like an, a, a Tomorrowland in Africa. Mm. And I see it happening in Egypt for, for some odd reason. Hey, Brass, watch There's you. pyramids in the background, you know. <laughs> hey, bro. hey, I just might start my own Tomorrowland. Hey, you know, bro. Right. Hey, bro. <laughs> if to they won't do it, and I beyond, bro. Hey, you're to living without and borders. And I've seen the to infinity and beyond, mm. and I can really feel that that's the energy you're putting mm. off. Can you I know? tell you about that? Please. Buzz Lightyear. Of course, but <laughs> I, I knew that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought there was um, like more to it, you know? When I was a kid and I was watching Toy Stories and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a thing about Buzz, which I also later realized is, is the Dunning-Kruger effect. He was a toy that didn't know he's a toy. Oh. He was a space ranger. Space you understand? Yeah. That's who he saw himself as, you know what I mean? And um, when he started speaking about infinity, I had never pictured what that could be. So True. when I started you know, picturing infinity, my mind kept going and going and going. And As since infinity then, does, yeah, I believe that's know. when my imagination really, you know, started to come alive. And I've never forgotten those words ever since. That's Damn. why they're everywhere with everything that I do. But I want to find out more about like Kumo left the person. I see you have some jewelry there. Yeah. One of those, those things, it looks like from it's the, the Egyptian thing. Yeah, the Ankh. The Ankh. Yeah. yeah, it looks it's like it's from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, sorry, sorry. Man. A lot less Yu-Gi-Oh, trust me. <laughs> it's uh, ancient Egypt. Oh, yeah. It's uh, the Ankh. Mm. It's a sign of eternal life. Mm. So it's something I gravitate towards quite a lot, you know, because I'm also not uh, a religious person. I'm an ominist, you know. Um, an ominist? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit much to get into for today, <laughs> but... Uh, it, it's basically to say that I don't believe there's one true religion, but I believe there's a truth in all of them. Ooh. And so for me, it's a, uh, yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> that's enough for this conversation. Yeah, that's fair, that's conversation fair. Conversation for another day, yeah. You know what, so you're speaking about truth and I'm glad that your truth is very much like the song, it's doing you. Yeah, yes. And I'm excited to see where you end up mm -hmm. because yeah, very easy listening. Yeah. We enjoyed listening to it. So yeah, looking forward to seeing more of your stuff. Thank you for being here Amen. on Crisp. 
Stay crispy, my friend. And you guys at home, you must also stay crispy. <laughs> eh? <laughs> All right, man. Good See. Keep it fresh, man. So just do you.